All right, welcome. Today we're going to talk about integration by substitution. I'm going to apologize in advance for the sound quality here. My microphone is having some problems and so it's picking up a lot of static. Anyways, we're going to talk about integration by substitution, which is going to involve some harder looking integrals like the one that we've got here. We've already seen that when we're integrating things, we're really just looking at antiderivatives. And so finding an antiderivative of this, just using our regular green sheet of rules, is going to be next to impossible. So normally what I do is have people sit and think about this integral here and see if we can find a way to come up with an antiderivative. So I encourage you to pause your video, sit with it for a little bit, and think about what's happening here, and see if you can get a stab at it. Maybe you've seen by now that what we're really dealing with is the end result of a chain rule. If we took uh, this e to the x cubed minus 1 as a function and took a derivative of this, we'd notice that we have this box here. And so if we were to take a derivative, what we would end up with is e to the box and then we have to multiply on the end by box prime, which is our 3x squared. So in here we'd have our 3x squared. And so we're really left with 3x squared e to the x cubed minus 1, which is the derivative of this e to the x cubed minus 1. Antiderivatives are going backwards, and so we'll start here, and we'll go backwards to end up at this thing here. And so we'll notice that our answer for this is e to the x cubed minus 1. And of course, since we're looking at antiderivatives, we can have any constant at the end, and so there's plus c here. The problem is this is a really hard thing to recognize. This is a really hard thing to just pull out of your hat. There's a lot of mental gymnastics that you have to go to to recognize this chain rule that's happening or maybe has already happened and then undo it. So we're going to look at a different process called substitution that will hopefully be a little bit more helpful. What we're going to notice right off the bat is that we have this box prime here. So if we notice this relationship between box and box prime then it ends up being relatively easy to undo this antiderivative here and end up with our x cubed minus 1 up in our exponent of e plus c with our constant. So what we're going to need to do is try and come up with a nice way of seeing this consistently, try and come up with a nice way of simplifying this. What we can really do is take this integral and if you want we can rewrite it just using box prime and box instead. And so we have box prime times e to the box with our dx here. And we know that this is really going to just be e to the box. The nice thing about this example is that our main function here, e, when we undo the derivative of that, the derivative of the outside part, it doesn't really do anything. So this is where we end up with, with this general form. What we want to do now, though, is to come up with a way of formalizing this. How can we get some sort of a standard version of this that's going to make it easy for us to replicate this process with any function, not just that nice one with e. So what we're going to do is called u substitution. Here are the main steps, and we'll go over this slowly when we have our first examples too. The main thing that we're keeping in mind is that we're going to look for a pair of functions. A function and its derivative. We're going to look for that inside of our integral. And one of the key things here is that we want to make sure that the function part f of x is inside something else. The chain rule deals with composition, and so we always want to be finding that composition. Since this is called u substitution, our variable is going to be u. So we're really going to put, instead of a box, we're going to put u. And instead of a box prime, we're going to put du. So we're going to call u our inside function. And then since the derivative of that is really going to be du over dx. We can multiply dx on both sides and we're going to have du equals 
f prime of x, the derivative part, and that dx differential that gets tacked onto the end. We'll talk about that more later, maybe in class. What we're going to do once we found those two pieces is we're going to substitute those in and we're going to take whatever function part we found. That was our e to the, or sorry, our x cubed minus 1 in our example. And we're going to replace it with u. And then we're going to look at our derivative, our 3x squared dx, and replace that with du. And then we'll go and do it again. So let's go back to our example that we had here. Let's get rid of all this stuff. And instead of using box and box prime, let's go ahead, oops, I missed a part here. Let's go ahead and call these things u and du. So I'm going to go ahead and notice that this is going to be u. So I'll say u is equal to x cubed minus 1. du then, or you could say du over dx if you want first is really going to be 3x squared. That's our derivative of our inside piece. This is going to be our box prime. And so we can say really du is going to be 3x squared dx. And we have that here. There's our 3x squared and there's our dx. Sometimes I'll rewrite our integral to make it look like e to the x cubed minus 1 times 3x squared dx, so we can really see that du right here and u right here. So if we go and substitute these things out, we're going to end up with a new integral. And it's going to look a lot easier. e to the u du. Notice that our little differential at the end is telling us that u is a new variable here that we're looking at. And so the antiderivative of e to the u is actually really easy. It's just e to the u plus c. And now we can go ahead and take our u substitution from before, plug that back in, and we end up with e to the x cubed minus 1 plus c. Just like we did when we had to do all the mental gymnastics of it all. So, again, we're going to rewrite our integral, and we'll notice that we're going to have a new, easier integral. We'll integrate that, and then substitute everything back. Put our u back in place and see what happens. So, I've got a couple of examples for us to try. Um, I encourage you to take a look at some of these on your own if you want. Maybe pause the video and see if you can get a start to it, and then we can pick it back up. So, I'll show these. I'll stop for a second, give you a chance to give it a try if you'd like, and then I'll pick it up and help us out. So the first thing that we'll do is pick a u and a du. So we're looking for a function and derivative pair. And the thing that we're trying to keep in mind is that the function has to be inside of something else. So you might notice that here, 3x plus 4 is inside of these parentheses. So I'm going to go ahead and say u is going to be 3x plus 4. We also want the derivative of that. If I solve for du, I know the derivative is going to be 3, so du is going to be 3 dx. I've got my u inside of my parentheses here, and these two pieces together become du. Again, if you want, you could move that 3 right over here into the middle, and so we could see it as 3x plus 4 to the 6 times 3 dx. That might be a little easier for some people to substitute it out, so by all means, give that a shot. But now our new integral looks like this. We have our u all over here, raised to the sixth power. And then this 3dx becomes du. And so we have u to the sixth du. The antiderivative rule here is pretty easy. We're going to go ahead and just add one to our exponent, divide by that number, and throw in our constant of integration here. But we know really that u was 3x plus 4, so we really have. 3x plus 4 to the 7 divided by 7 plus c. You can check this answer really easily. We can always go backwards to see if we can get to our starting point by just taking a derivative. And we know that we're going to have to use the chain rule here. If we do this, we'll bring our 7 out front. It's going to cancel out with this 7. And then we'll have something raised to the 6th. And then we'll have to multiply by our box prime, which is really 3. So we'll have 3 times x, or sorry, 
3 times 3x plus 4 to the 6th, and that's what we have here. So we're good to go. This one's pretty similar. Give this a shot. Maybe I'll pause a little bit after I set up u and du so you guys can pause the video and see how you've got things going. All right, here, u is going to be the part that's inside of these parentheses raised to the fourth. So we have that u is going to be 2x cubed minus 3. And du over dx is going to be 6x squared, which means du is going to be 6x squared dx. See if you can finish that out. When we substitute our integral, we can rewrite this if you want, just so you can see what's going on. This is really the integral 2x cubed minus 3 to the fourth times 6x squared dx. I'm just switching the order here. The commutative property lets me do that. And now, if you really look, you can see this 6x squared dx is going to become du. And all the stuff inside of these parentheses are going to become u. So we're going to be left with the integral of u. We still have this exponent of 4 around times du. Antiderivative rules are pretty easy now because u is a variable based on what our differential here is telling us. So this is going to be u to the 5 over 5 plus c. If we take our u substitution and put that back in place, we're going to have 2x cubed minus 3 to the 5 over 5 plus c. And again, check that using the chain rule and see how things go. This one's a little harder, maybe. I don't know. Let me rewrite it first and give you a hint on how it goes. We're going to change the square root to an exponent of a half. And now you're going to notice that this one looks a lot like these first two problems. You've got a du here. You've got a u on the inside. I'll help you set it up, but then give it a shot. 2x squared minus 5 is on the inside. The derivative of that is going to be 4x dx. See if you can substitute that out. Our 4x dx are going to get wrapped up together inside of a du. And then all this stuff in the middle is going to turn into u. So we're really going to have the integral of u raised to the half du. So we'll add one to our exponent. Divide by that number and add our constant of integration. And we can go ahead and substitute this back. Uh, if u is supposed to be 2x squared minus 5, let's throw that in there. And really the only thing we have left to do is simplify some stuff. We've got a fraction in the denominator, so let me fix that a little bit. And so we've got 2 times 2x squared minus 5 to the 3 halves over 3. And we can't forget our constant of integration on here. So anything that we can rewrite using exponents is going to all pretty much look the same. We're going to have some derivative hanging around on the outside. We'll have our u on the inside. And then we're going to be undoing our power rule here. We'll be adding 1 to our exponent and dividing by that same number. So things are going to go pretty easily once we get the hang of this. The process is going to be the main thing that we'll have to focus on. This one is hard. These ones are tricky and we'll spend time in class going over stuff like this. Here it's hard to pick out what our u and our du is going to be because it doesn't look like there's anything inside of anything else. So we really have to focus on the fact that one of these things is a derivative of the other x squared plus 4x minus 1. If we take a derivative of this, we're going to get 2x plus 4. So let's go ahead and just pick that right off the bat. Our du is going to be 2x plus 4 dx. And if we rewrite this, we can substitute it pretty well. I'm going to really heavy-handedly rewrite this. 
This is our 1 over x squared plus 4x minus 1. And I'm going to take that numerator right out so we can see where it goes. It's going to get wrapped right up into that du here, and it's going to go away. And all this stuff here is going to be our u, so we're going to be left with 1 over u. What I'll normally do now is just kind of take this stuff all together like this and pull it off to the side. So our new integral when we do our substitution is going to be 1 over u du. And this we can recognize as the natural log of u. So here, if we substitute back, we end up with the natural log of x squared plus 4x minus 1, all in absolute values, plus c. These natural logs, I think, are the hardest ones to recognize. We've been talking about them when we do the chain rule. We've been saying that it's hard to recognize this as the end result of a natural log. They just look weird. It's that box prime over box. That's what we've been doing as our answers for the natural log chain rules. And so we can see that undoing that is a little bit tricky as well. That's all I've got for you. Uh, we'll talk more about some harder examples of these in class. But for now, make sure that you can deal with any of these couple of three ones with exponent rules and stuff like that. Give a shot to this, and we'll see how things go from there. Uh, I'll see you guys in class, and we'll talk more about how everything is going.